You know, these colors that you put in that are green and blue, they work, but they only work if you have warm colors around them. So if you put your shadows in, and your shadows are a real cool tone, that's good, but so many people get scared off by just the fact that they look so stark against the color of the, the contrast of the highlight that they avoid leaving their greens in their skin, which is a very natural color. So I might see it right in here, and I might see it again in here, only it's a little bit more violet, I think, right in there. But those colors won't work unless I have really warm colors around them. That's not working yet. Until I get that value of warmth around it, it's just going to pop out and say, you know, I'm bruised here. And then once you get the color around it, the pretty color at the edge of it, it fades out and into the shadows, you'll see all of a sudden that color feels exactly like what you see there. New time was up. I saw you wiggling over there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to look at it from a distance now. with teeth, when you paint teeth in, and so many artists avoid it. You know, the only portrait, um, if you go to the governor's, I mean, go look at the governor's portraits over at the state capitol. It's a great place to study portraiture. Um, the state capitol has, ton, has tons of them. Uh, avoid Jerry Brooms. <laughs> it's very modern. <laughs> very modern. Um, in fact, one of those that you go, oh, wow. He really doesn't have the same sense of his face. <laughs> but that's the painter's fault. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, about smiles. The only person who has a smile, and they call it a Hollywood smile because the teeth are showing, is Ronald Reagan, right? He was our governor. So his smile is um, the, one of the only ones. The rest of them have a very serious look to them. And they can say it's because that's kind of a classical style. They can say whatever they want to say. Part of it is just that it is harder to do tea. Okay? And what you saw happening here was immediately her teeth looked like they were sticking out in bone. That's what happens when you put your teeth in. So what you have to do to avoid that is make sure that you get the dark shadows around here Play with the shadow on the upper lip and keep your teeth dark enough that they're not going to protrude. So I have her teeth fairly dark, but she has really white teeth. The truth is that her teeth are not white. They're reflecting the colors of her lips and the room. And so all I'm going to see in white, which makes them feel like they're bright, is this little teeny tiny reflection of light that hits the very bottom of her teeth and makes them stand out. But you have to be really careful with that because then they become buck again. So it's a balance act between getting that value of shadow in there and getting those teeth to sit back but yet putting light on them and making them feel like they have um, dimension to them, like they're white. So as I do this, I pull them forward, I let them get lighter at the bottom, but I don't overdo them. And now, one of the things that really shows a person's character, something we know about them, but we don't identify with them um, instantly until we paint their portrait, is the shape 
of their front teeth and their eye teeth and that little negative space that comes up below the teeth. So in her, we're seeing the shadow because her, her second teeth are shorter than her center teeth. That shape is part of her character, part of her smile. Until I get that in there, it's not going to be accurate. What is that? That's a dark, empty hole inside of her mouth. So what color are we going to paint it? If we use straight brown, it's going to look a little flat. If we use straight black, it's going to look really flat. So I'm going to take red and green, the same combination I've been using in the tear duct, only a little bit more green because I want it very cool because there's no light going in that mouth, even though we have red colors in our mouth. We want it to be a shade of brown, but we still don't want it to be a warm brown. So it's the green and the, and the, um, and I'll generally take the tiniest brush I can find with the tightest tip to do that with when I'm finishing a portrait. Until then, I just kind of, you know, fake it. Now I want to go in and define and finish this area, so I'm going to look for a nice little brand new brush usually because I wear these things out fast. One with a very good tip to it, very tight tip, brand new. And so this is what I'll use, and I always, you know, I replace these fast. I don't buy expensive ones because, you know, I know I'm going to wear them out fast. So the next thing I'm going to do is define her teeth. And it's 8.20 right now, so we'll go another two sessions and we'll be done. It'll be nine. center of this tooth here. I see shadow and so I want to really work the shadows on her teeth too at the same time. I want to cast a shadow at the top of the tooth. the shape that the upper lip makes by the negative, I mean, by what space I'm seeing, what, what, what are the, what's the shape of the teeth? That's going to define my upper lip, the bottom of my upper lip. So now I can take just a little bit of highlight right there at the bottom of that tooth. See so, yeah, how white is not white. Only where white gets wet or it has an instantaneous sheen to it at the surface, is it really white? And is it really white then? That's the question. If I were to make those teeth any brighter, which I might do a little bit at the bottom, that sheen wouldn't show up. But balancing them so that they don't look dull is my next goal. So a lot of times you get a little bit of a light at the very tip of the tooth and you don't want them to look crooked either. So and the tooth actually gets thinner at the bottom so you get a little bit of transparency at the bottom of the tooth. 